Hey everyone, welcome to the Revenue Growth Help Desk with this special edition that we have today. I'm Melissa Valdez, Director of Client Engagement, and we're turning the tables a little bit today. Typically in the interviewer's seat, we have our fabulous CEO, Matt Shares, but this time Matt has agreed to be interviewed. And we have a great topic today. We are going to discuss Matt and his background in celebration of Black History Month and talk a little bit about SBI's diversity, equity, and inclusion strategy. So Matt, thank you for being here as the interviewee today. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm happy. I didn't have to do uh, anything other than uh, make sure I had a shirt on. So uh, it was easy prep. Hey, that's a win in my book. <laughs> Cross something off the task list, it's good. <laughs> a lot of people who know you have an idea of your background and achievements, but for the audience, if I may, I thought I would highlight a few uh, points of your career and your background. And we'll start with SBI. So you came to the firm, you were one of maybe 10 employees. You all were flying and fixing the plane at the same time as we've heard you all often say, you started and built our private equity practice and then you moved all the way up to where you sit now as CEO. But before that, I have also heard you many times say you're a card carrying salesman and starting your career at CentOS with yeah. daily 8 a.m. stand-ups and maybe 10 minutes of a break from the phones each day to making your way up to VP of sales. Prior to that, you were a professional hockey player, which you, I can imagine, is a grind. And another for another show, we'll tell the stories about that. But yes. <laughs> definitely a grueling process and just a lot of discipline. Uh, that you still carry today discipline and athleticism i think you have something like 3.2 percent body fat if i'm correct and <laughs> and uh, yeah apologies if that's too high i don't i don't know <laughs> but none of that would have been possible <laughs> without your humble beginnings and uh where you came from and your family now a lot of us at sbi have had the pleasure of hearing stories about your family your father dan your mother barb and your brother jay you are half Canadian and half Jamaican. So I thought we could start with a treat, a little bit about you bragging about your family and then tell the audience about those relationships you witnessed growing up and how it helped shape your community and you as a CEO and a leader. Thanks, Mel. Um, so kind of you to, to initiate this and, um, and, and encourage me to speak about it. So, yeah, I think probably where I would start is, so my father, Dan, was uh, spent the first 40 years of his life, almost 40 years of his life in Jamaica. And uh, my mother, Barbara, was born in a little town in Alberta. So you have this man in 1960, uh, a soccer player and water polo player in the Commonwealth Games. My dad was a great athlete who meets my mother, Barbara. And if you think about skin colors, Mel, my father was as black as black could be. And my mom to this day, God bless, she's 85. And you know, we speak about her all the time. She's uh, as white as white could be. And they meet on a ship in 1960. My dad writes letters with my mom for two years and he proposes via letter. And my mother oh. flies from Vancouver to Kingston marries my father and they live the first five years of their life in Kingston, Jamaica. So what's interesting about that for Black History Month is my mom will often tell my children who are 15 to 18, myself, my brother, about how she experienced, and this is her term, not mine, reverse racism, because people often think about racism as, you know, white people against minorities. My mom's like, well, it's interesting. She goes, when I moved to Kingston with your father, you know, I was one of a handful of white women. And I dealt with discrimination the other way. 1967, my parents moved from Jamaica to Vancouver. They didn't want to raise a family in Jamaica. My dad wanted to, to leave there. My brother was born in July of 67. And kind of, as they say, the rest is history. And we ended up settling in a tiny little town about 90 miles east of Vancouver called Hope, British Columbia. Um, and my dad was the only black man in the town. So my entire upbringing, you know, my, my skin being of brown, people were sort of like, I know he's a something, 
you know, kind of where does he fit? But I had this crazy afro and sort of my brother. So, and we were pretty well known in the town because my dad was in charge of the hockey arena, which is kind of funny that a guy who never skated and didn't know the first thing about hockey when he moved end up running the ice arena. But then both his sons obviously leaned into hockey and that seemed to work out pretty well for my brother and I. So that's the history and, and, and how we came to be. So two comments there. One, writing letters is a lost art. So a lot can clearly be accomplished just by writing a handwritten note and that uh, Jan scored pretty big with uh, with Barbara there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he did. My dad, was, my dad was very charming and uh, he, he, he did. And he, and he asked my grandfather for permission via a separate letter. So there you go. <laughs> That's for a, definitely another show we'll dive into. <laughs> but, uh, the second takeaway would be that, just to your point right now about your dad not knowing how to skate, yet being in charge of a hockey arena, you, you can pick up skills along the way, right? If you study hard enough or you just go totally. for it, um, you can pick it up along the way, right? So I, I yes. love recently uh, you and I were talking about your town of Hope, British Columbia. And this is probably my favorite quote that you've ever said. It was full of special people who practiced inclusion before it was a term. Yeah. Just let that sink in, everyone, for the audience. Um, how has the Black Lives Matter movement and celebrations of Black History Month throughout the years impacted you or inspired you to lead as a man, a father, and a CEO? Yeah. You know, Mel, it, growing up, while my brother and I dealt with small bouts of racism or kind of one-off terms and derogatory terms that I don't have to say on, on this, but everybody can understand. Um, I don't think it was anywhere near what, you know, my, my brother-in-law, one of my closest friends who married my wife's twin, grew up in, in South Georgia. And, you know, Bill grew up in what you would think of the traditional 1970s Black America hardcore divisiveness, especially in the South. Mm -hmm. Canada has never been like that. It's more of a mosaic than it is a, a melting pot, I think, culturally. Um, but we dealt with our fair share, for sure. Um, but I think what was interesting, and then my time with Black History Month is, my dad always told my brother and I that the instead of getting angry, that you should feel sorry for somebody when they would use a racial slur. And mm -hmm. my brother's pretty mellow. He's not a combative guy. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit different. So I ended up in a, in a, in a few altercations at, at a young age and, a, and in my teens. My dad was like, you, like, you can't live like this. Like, it's, it, it's not going to work. So he, my dad was big on, on mental edge. So I think there's that component. And then if I carry that through to your question around, you know, social justice and racial equality, my brother and I have a really unique perspective because we have a white mom and a black dad. And we do both identify because of, uh, of our dad and just our skin tone. We've always identified as black. Um, but we, we love our mom the same as we love our dad. So it's a really unique perspective to have grown up that way. And I just, I have a lot of pride because my mom and dad were trailblazers, right? Like that was in the sixties oh, and seventies and like, interracial marriage was not something that was that was um, a lot of people were doing and, and doing without some some pushback so black history month it makes me very proud um, it always is a time of reflection and with different things that my brother and i are involved in now whether in the community and hope and what we do or outside of that um, with our our different backgrounds and, and sort of personal platforms we're able to make a difference um, in, in a lot of people's lives. So it, it, it really makes me proud. Yeah, you definitely have, you both, you and Jay, have, have unique platforms where you can kind of share a message and inspire others to lead. And I love what you said, what Dan, Dan shares, the great Dan shares, I wish he had published a book of, of Proverbs or something <laughs> before, before he, he left this earth. <laughs> uh, but using the mental edge, right? Having that mental edge, I think that, that's really important not only just in your day-to-day, -day, whatever you're doing in business, but just in everyday life, right? So I think that's, that's a great yeah. takeaway from yeah. that. We have a really talented and special group of people here at SBI. 
who recently formed a diversity, equity, and inclusion committee. And we're taking steps to implement a program of action. So what does it mean for SBI and other companies to invest time and resources in DEI? And what are the immediate and long-term results or impact that you hope to see from this initiative? Yeah, so, you know, the first part of that question, Mel, I think <clears throat> for me growing up how I grew up is I was I was taught not to judge because I didn't want to be judged based on the color of my skin or if, if somebody didn't know that I was half black and they would use the N word like it would it would literally like send a feeling into my stomach to this day and I couldn't help myself but sit, but like call that person out and go hey my dad's black I'm half black like he can't say that so knowing and being on the other side of it I'm I'm proud that I can be in a role where I can support because I will tell you the the grassroots effort in our firm of some of our employees who are so passionate and it's a younger generation than than probably you know you and I yeah I, I got a few years on you but I'm way Wait, closer <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm way closer to 50 you know only 2 years away than I am to 30 so it makes me proud of our team that it was done um, naturally. It's got a very SBI vibe to it, which is it's in the flow, right? It's not a special committee locked off in a room. It's in the flow. We speak about it naturally. And it's not myself or our chief people officer standing on a soapbox at the top of the hour saying we have to do this to check a box because the board said it. We're doing this because we're passionate about diverse opinions and points of view, equity across every role, regardless of background. And the big one that Matt Lane, our chief people officer, has taught me, Mel, is about inclusion. And it's ironic because that's really was part of the impetus as I thought about my childhood, is how you, how you make people feel and being aware of some of these little micro biases that, and Jenny's taught us about that, that you didn't even know you had. So, you know, we're doing a series of things from recognizing it, different types of events during the year, paying attention to how we source and bring candidates in. Our purpose as a firm is to drive people to reach their full potential. You typically get a better outcome when you have diversity of thought, collaboration, and not everybody comes from the exact same background where you end up with an echo chamber. So I'm, I'm proud of the team, I'm proud of our firm, and, um, and I'm, I'm proud of, of many of our clients because now with the, the executive programs that you lead, you and I spend a lot of time with, with CEO groups and chief revenue officers. And I feel like together the executives are making making real lasting change. Yeah, and I agree with you. And I think it's interesting because you know, you you're black. I'm I often refer to myself as Tex Mex. I'm Mexican heritage and I'm a female, right? And but our, our DEI committee really it it we just focus so much on, on different challenges that people face, whether it's race related or mental health or, you know, any kind of maybe physical challenges or mental challenges, whatever it is. I really am proud of our firm for embracing that and recognizing it. It just, I think for those of us who've known SBI for a long time, they certainly see the progress for those of us, people out there who are maybe new to SBI or just become familiar it might appear that it's always been that way. And it, it's just it's just so amazing to see the evolution of where we were and where we've come and how much further we have to go. I, I agree. It is, um, it is early, early uh, in our evolution. And, but it's, it feels like it's natural now. It doesn't feel forced. So I think, you know, part of your question was kind of why and how and the how, it's gotta be natural, right? And it's gotta be an everybody thing. It can't just be, myself or our chief people officer it has to be everybody and i think that's what's giving us some of the traction we're getting right now yeah well dei like revenue growth is an all the time thing not a sometimes thing am i right <laughs> yes it is sister you got it <laughs> well that's it for today everyone thank you for listening to this special episode like i said we're so happy to have matt tell his story share his story kind of help you get a vision of the culture here at SBI and, and how we've, we've evolved as a firm. And so Matt, I thank you for sharing your story and the wisdom of Dan shares again with our audience.
Thanks, Mel. Appreciate you uh, letting me switch seats. This has been a lot of fun, and uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks for thanks for pushing me to do this. I appreciate it. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, audience. Take care.